This is more about life in the time of the coronavirus epidemic. The PM is now getting personally involved, whatever that means, in the passage of the American Rescue Plan. I thought it was the American Relief Act, but no, now it's the American Rescue Plan. Americans are going down, they need to be rescued. The PM says the clock is ticking because unemployment benefits are set to expire and he is not going to allow that. Imagine that, what a horror. People who are not working, not getting paid. This is America, damn it. Everyone gets paid. On the internet, I heard Groucho Marx say, talking about politics in America, this is the Garden of Eden for incompetence. Oh, if only he could have seen the gouge. When it comes to incompetence, the gouge is an epitome. Fancy Bulldozy is really getting her way now. The trumpet is gone. She doesn't have him as a focus. Although she keeps several thousand National Guard troops in Washington to protect her from what? Another rampage. I think she should get the gouge to create another cabinet post, the Department of Entropy. She could be in charge of that. She specializes in much ado about nothing. Power and money? Money and power. Power and money. Those who have it will do anything to keep it. And those who do not have it, there's a word for them, too. Powerless. Sometimes literally powerless, as with those poor fools in Texas. At this point, we share their condition. We are powerless. We have only what the government gives us. The government claims that it loves us, will do whatever it takes to save us, to rescue us. The American rescue plan. To the rescue! That is all a big show. That only serves to solidify the power of those in power. And it makes them appear to be benevolent as if they really do care about us, the people, we are a priority. That is not true. Look at the soldiers. We are a threat. They care first and foremost and only about themselves. That doesn't make them evil. That is only human nature at work. That's the golden rule. The ones with the gold rule. Some states are opening up completely with no restrictions as of today. The Center for Disease Control advises against this, but cannot stop it. Other states are moving in this direction. As far as policy is concerned, my state is more concerned with the vaccine rollout than it is with lifting restrictions. So the masks and social distancing will continue. The field mouse will see to that. The high point of the epidemic so far was in mid-December. The numbers we have now are about one-seventh of that. Nearly 2,800,000 plus people, 2,800,000 plus people died of any cause in the United States in the year 2018. In 2019, that increased by several thousand. In the year 2020, zero CE, that number went up above 2,900,000, an increase of 50,000. 
Yet, we are told that over 400,000 people died of COVID-19 in 2020 in the United States. Where did they go? I think this must be an episode of Lost. It's the Lost episode of Lost. There is a report that claims evidence of an attack on the Capitol tomorrow by unknown insurrectionists, by right-wing radicals. Authorities are saying that they are bracing for this attack. The PM went right after those states that dropped their restrictions. He called it Neanderthal thinking, and he pleaded with them to rethink their position. But, 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 he did not order them around. If it comes to that, what might be called enforced unity, there will be trouble. States' rights. The Civil War, remember? By the way, the definition of enforced unity, that would be fascism. Already, politicians are running against governors, like the field mouse, saying that they abuse their authority by closing businesses, and they failed as leaders by allowing the large urban public schools to spend a year in remote learning. Meanwhile, Japan is struggling to proceed with the Olympics, already delayed one year. Economically, they want the Olympics to happen. But barring a swift and complete recovery, it is not looking good. They are very close to barring any visits to Japan by non-competitors, foreign spectators. So, there go the profits. What's left is hard work and an economic drain. The Olympics is itself a massive global event. Not exactly what the doctor ordered in the year 1 CE.